I'm sorry if you're a guy and you're watching this and this is just like stuff that you don't want to know, but hey, we bleed every month, so I don't think you'd be too happy if you had to do that for uh, the majority of your life. On June 1st, I was super stoked because I just finished um, one challenge, which wasn't necessarily a fitness challenge, um, but it was the 30 days of uploads, which I did in May. So going into June, I was super stoked about the fact that I set a goal for myself and I achieved it. I felt like I had some wind under my wings and I was like, you know what, I want to use this momentum and this spirit of like self-belief and all that that I have coming out of the month of May. I want to use this in order to focus a little bit more on fitness now. So on June 1st, I uh, started the two week shred challenge by Chloe Ting which is on YouTube and if you haven't heard about her name um, it just went viral and all her uh, workouts and her plans um, are free which is and they're all online and easy to follow I'd say I didn't know what I was necessarily going into I did ask a couple of questions here and there I asked a couple of friends that had done it I had watched a couple of videos. So that's the extent of the research that I did. I did watch the video, um, the actual workout video that I was going to be doing every single day, first thing in the day for the entire two weeks. I wanted to see what that was. So I watched the video and then I was like, you know what? That's the research I'm gonna do and I'm gonna get started. I decided to do my initial measurements. So let's check that out. All right guys. Day one of the Chloe Ting challenge, two week challenge. I'm starting off with the two week one. So today's day one. So we're gonna go ahead and take measurements. So I call this the rib measurement, I think. So we're gonna go by inches. And I like to just like go around my ribs here. So that's what we're gonna do. My cat's playing. So we're gonna do this. The dip in my curve. See that the dip in my waist so i'm gonna try to do it right here to do right in the middle so right above the belly button situation like right here it's probably like the widest part of the abdomen all right guys it is day two of the chloe ting challenge i forgot to take full body measurements i only took my ab measurements so we're gonna go ahead finish taking the full body measurements here. Oi. Weigh in. I'm gonna go really quickly weigh in. So I have weighed in, but I'm not gonna tell you guys my weight because I really do believe that that just promotes like a lot of like negativity and like negative body image messages. Me personally, as a viewer, when I see someone disclosing their weight, it makes me rethink myself. I look at people when they talk about um, their initial weight, right? Or anyone that talks about weight. And I personally just take a lot of negative body image issues away from it. Um, it's just really toxic for me personally. I will weigh myself at the end of it and tell you guys how much I lost in like pounds. But even then, I'm not really gonna disclose to you at what weight I really stand at. Let's go do our first two week challenge. I'm so excited for it. Okay, so now that you guys have seen my initial measurements, let's go ahead and look at the entire 14 days. I won't necessarily bore you guys with video logs from every single day, um, but let's go ahead and see the footage from those two weeks. It's day two of the challenge. I'm sweating. Ew, amazing. It takes a lot for me to sweat actually, so. I feel like I was able to do a lot of the steps without too many pauses, but I think that might be because I'm familiar with the moves because I did them yesterday and they're so fresh in my mind. So maybe that's why like I didn't have to take a pause and like actually look at what she was doing. So maybe that's why. Also, wow, I look so nice right now. I'm just gonna put on um, a five minute stretching video and just stretch it out real quick so that I'm not dealing with like trying to do her workouts while I'm already sore from yesterday's workout. Oh, 
Day three. Check out that sweat. Yes, 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 living for this. Somehow I made it a priority to do this first thing in the day for myself. So it's nice to, I see why people work out in the morning because it's nice to um, get it out of the way first thing and you start your day off feeling super accomplished and then you really do have a productive day after. Like yesterday was day two and I had such an incredibly productive day yesterday. I can't even explain to you guys. Like I filmed two major videos yesterday and it took a lot of time but I did it and yesterday was such a beautiful balance of everything. I worked out, I set another personal goal for myself, which I don't wanna share, but I, um, I crushed that personal goal yesterday as well. So I worked out, crushed that personal goal, made um, dinner yesterday, and ended up filming two videos. Like yesterday was such a productive day and I just hope Today is as productive as a day as yesterday was, so I will say that I really like the routine of doing it. First thing in the day. Another day, another workout. What is today, day four, I think? I'm not sore today, which is a good thing. I didn't do a whole lot of stretching yesterday, but we went for like an hour or like an hour and a half long walk yesterday in the evening. So I just feel like I kind of stretched out all my sore limbs. <sighs> okay, done. There's my little sweat trickle. Sweating, sweating, sweating. I really like the sweat I get out of this. It's nice. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go, there's not much to say at the end of day five, not much has changed. Okay, just checking it. I can't believe it's day six already. Is it? I don't think so. It's day six. Despite the fact that I actually went to sleep really late last night, tossing and turning, didn't really get the best sleep, but, and I woke up a little bit earlier than I normally do, but all things considered, my energy level was actually great today. Okay guys, I'm in the basement. It is officially the seventh day. So in terms of how I'm feeling, I'm really enjoying um, the process, I think. Just the routine of like having the exact same like workout to go through every single morning you begin to think less about it and you begin to know the moves and the reps and everything like you just begin to know it like the back of your hand and it just becomes so much easier to do it almost becomes like a uh like almost like a meditative session where you're just going through the motions of doing something and you're really just like present i don't know like i'm really liking it so far guys I don't know what day it is so I don't know exactly which day of the two-week cred challenge we're on right now I mean I kind of know but I don't feel like doing the math I'm really tired um, so it is right now Saturday and tomorrow Sunday of course if today is Saturday and then the day after that is Monday and Monday is the last day of the challenge okay so now that you guys have gone ahead and seen the daily video logs and a little bit of footage of me actually following the workouts I am going to try to uh, summarize the experience so right in the beginning um, it wasn't necessarily easy but it wasn't impossible and I think I remember mentioning that in one of the video logs um, it wasn't impossible and I liked that and I like the fact that it wasn't easy but it wasn't impossible you want something that's going to challenge you a little bit so that you feel accomplished on the flip side of it right but then you also don't want something that's so hard that you're demotivated and you don't want to do it so um, I was super pumped and I actually really um, enjoyed the workouts like I liked the workouts there are certain things uh, that she does certain like corkscrew moves certain like um, a tricep toe touch like these are all positions that your body can go into should you want it to but it's not a position that you find yourself in every single day unless you're like a gymnast or an acrobat or a dancer so there were certain things like certain moves and certain exercises that I was very pleased that I could do because it just looks so fancy like that corkscrew thing oh my god like it just looked so intense but then when you actually put yourself in that position and you know 
you're not worried about people judging you because you're at home, like you're not at the gym, you're more inclined to giving your full effort because you don't care about looking stupid. And when you go give your full effort to uh, master something that you're trying to mimic, like something that you're trying to follow, um, a lot of the times you end up really impressing yourself. 13 minutes, you break out a great sweat, um, which brings me to my next point. I don't sweat that easily. And so to be sweating from 13 minute workouts was like really good for me. Besides that, earlier on um, in my video logs, I remember feeling that I was sore and I was hurting and my leg was hurting. Like week one, my muscles were really adjusting to this trauma that I was putting it through. You now normally when I'm really, really sore, I just rest it out, but there was no rest day here. You had to get up and you had to push through that, which was in itself fun, I'm gonna say, in a way, because I got to challenge myself and do something I don't normally do, which is like work through the pain. So that was interesting. Um, but in addition to that, I do remember saying I would really enjoy if she had like a stretching or like a cool down routine at the end of the video. And then I recently saw that like three weeks ago, she actually uploaded a separate video, which is like do this every day after your workouts. So it's a cool down, it's a stretching thing. So spot on man this chick is great like chloe tank is like awesome so those were my takeaways um from the actual workouts now once all that's said and done towards the end i think this was the second last day day 13 or day 14 itself i forget but i hurt my wrist i have really tiny hands i know you can't really tell how tiny they are but I have really, really small hands and I have even tinier wrists. Like compared to the rest of my body, I'm a big curvy girl and compared to the rest of my body, my hands and my, my wrists are just really tiny. So a lot of her plank positions where you're in a tabletop or a plank, where you're um, resting on your hands, like your entire body weight is on your hands and your feet and your knees kind of. So the weight is distributed. It's not like you're levitating on your hands, but um, any of those moves I felt were like really hurting my, maybe I just don't have the right form. I don't know, but they were really hurting my wrist and my fingers. I'm lucky, I don't know if this is lucky or unlucky, but fortunately or unfortunately, I ended up hurting my wrist from those tabletop positions. I think I sprained it, maybe twisted it. I don't know, maybe put too much pressure on it, but I ended up doing that on day 13 or 14, I forget. Um, so I was able to actually finish the whole thing. Following which, I wanted to give myself about a two day hiatus before I did my final measurements because I wanted some of the swelling to go away from my body, so on and so forth. So I finished on a Monday. So I started on a Monday, July, uh, June 1st, and then I finished on a Monday, two weeks from there. And I really wanted to get you guys some measurements on Wednesday and Thursday. Now this was last week. We're this week now. So we are Wednesday, three weeks out from the actual start of my workout rather than two weeks out. So I wanted to give you guys um, these measurements in the middle of that week, but at the risk of being TMI, basically what happened is I wasn't focusing on the food portion of it. So I definitely was not focusing on the diet portion of it. Um, we've had company over and the TMI portion is that I'm due to get my period this week. What happens to me is, I'm very regular, so what happens to me is that during my PMS phase, which is about a week before the day I'll get my period, I tend to um, have the appetite of a mammoth. Um, so I eat like an elephant and I eat everything all over the place. I eat sweet things, I eat salty things, savory things. Um, I don't know what it is. It's I mean, I do know what it is. It's definitely my hormones. And I ate everything I wanted to eat and I was also super, super, super bloated from all that junk I was eating. So by the time my swelling had gone down from the workouts, which was like 48 hours after, so like the Wednesday after the Monday that I finished, by the time I was ready to film for you guys, I was like, I'm not ready because now I've got 10 more pounds of like water weight on me because I've been eating junk, number one. So I was like, okay, I gotta wait until this PMS phase is gone because this is that was not my true weight. 
or my true measurements at that time. So what happens is I eat, I swell, I'm hormonal, I'm swelling, I'm getting puffier and puffier. And then as the PMS ends and it gets closer towards the first day of my menstruation, I tend to shed a lot of the water weight and then any of the added weight or inches on me closer towards when I start my period is actually just whatever is in my uterus, I guess. So I know this all sounds like gibberish. <laughs> maybe you're a woman, maybe you can relate to me, but that's how it works for me. I seem to snap right back as soon as I get my period or like a day or two even before I get my period, I'm like all fine um, with the exception of the abdomen area because I am going to swell there a little bit more until I shed everything that has to be shed, the beautiful glorious lining. I'm sorry if you're a guy and you're watching this and this is just like stuff that you don't want to know, but hey, we bleed every month, so I don't think you'd be too happy if you had to do that for uh, the majority of your life. That is the reasoning behind why I held off on doing the measurements uh, just 48 hours after because I was just not at my best then, which brings me now uh, to the comparison measurements, which I did for you guys today. So when looking at these comparison measurements right now, please keep in mind that I did not eat well, I did not sleep well, I did not stay hydrated, I was an extremely bad girl, um, a woman life happened, so I was PMSing and I'm due to get my period, so I will explain uh, how those things are reflected in the inches and the weight so i'll discuss that stuff with you guys okay so let's go have a look at when i was doing my final measurements so if you can't tell i'm wearing the exact same stuff including the sports bra i want to wear the exact same things i was wearing for day one of the measurement so i'm a curvier girl i'm actually not that tall i'm only five four in height So now that you've seen me do the final measurements, let's read out the numbers. So I gained four pounds. I weighed myself today and I actually gained four pounds since I started this. Now those four pounds could be anything. Those four pounds, as you guys know, muscle is heavier than fat. It could also just be a uh, residue water retention from last week's junk and also of course PMSing. Um, but it is most likely that those additional pounds are most likely everything that I'm carrying in my uterus right now, which is going to shed, so. Remember guys, if you really want results, you gotta do it all rounded. You gotta do everything together, okay. So I like to call the next measurement my rib or my under boob. So that measurement there stayed the same. It's 31 inches, so I'm 31 inches around here. Like right under, I'm 31 inches, so. That stayed, that didn't change. Now that area also accounts for like back fat and stuff, you know, like that extra hangage you get under your bra strap in the back or something like that. Like that area also counts for that. So I'm 31 inches there. Um, and then my waist, which is the tiniest part of my waist, which is the part where the curve is the smallest. So it's the ittiest part of my waist is where I measure my waist. Um, that was 29.5 inches when I started off. So that was my first measurement. And right now, today, it actually went up by half an inch. It's 30 inches um, today. It could also just be that I gained weight but it is most likely because I'm carrying a bunch of extra weight in the middle right now because I'm going to get my period soon. So I hate to keep repeating that, but I really need women to understand that when you're beating yourself up over these things, you gotta take a step back. And I know I'm preaching this, but I don't follow it because I get worked up about this all the time. You really gotta take a step back and assess, be like, what changed? Why is this happening? And there's gonna be an explanation for everything. You don't have to beat yourself up over it. So gained inches on my waist and that's okay um so then my belly button so around the belly button area which uh this is quite interesting because that's the area that puffs the most um but it stayed the same it stayed at 33 inches which is like very interesting so it's 31 i'm 31 inches right under uh my boob so right where my rib is 
I am currently 30 inches at the smallest part of my waist where and then where it widens out a little bit more around my belly button I'm 33 inches and that stayed the same from the beginning to now didn't lose anything hip handle so I have love handles I like to measure that uh, this was nice this was definitely uh, surprising um, I was 41 inches around my hip handle when I started off and I am 39 and a half inches around my hip handle now um, each of my thighs I've got really big thighs they're very chunky I'm a curvy girl um, so each of my thighs were 27 inches around and at the widest part and I like to measure it right where my bum ends and I have a big bum so it's like easy to figure out where it's ending. Um, so right where my bum cheek will end is where I measure because that's the widest part of my thigh. So I like to measure that part. 27 inches when I measured first, 27 inches today, it didn't change. Calves remain the same, 16 inches around. Each of my calves remain the same. My butt, which is the money maker because that thing's the big one. <laughs> I shouldn't call it a money maker. That's just so wrong. My butt's not a money maker. My butt's a beautiful, glorious, free, independent woman. Um, she was 43 inches when I measured first, starting off, and she's actually gone up half an inch. She's 43 and a half inches. So I don't know if my booty. I will say that I do feel like my booty lifted a little since I started the workout. So even though I don't need any more butt, I'm not sad about it. It's fine. And my arms, I have chunky arms. They are 13 inches around at their biggest part. Very, very chunky arms. It's one of my chunkiest places. Um, and that stayed pretty much the same. 13 inches around, did not change. So that's basically the lowdown of it. I really want to be transparent. I've seen a lot of videos where everyone's like, oh my God, I did the Chloe Tang two, two week shred challenge, blah, blah, blah. Or I did this Chloe Tang challenge or I did this fitness challenge and it worked wonders and look at this and look at that. I'm sure it does, you know, and that's great. But then people like me who it doesn't work for sit there and they look at it and they're like, there's something amazingly wrong with me if I can't lose the inches and I can't lose the weight doing what they're doing. It just goes to tell you that like you can do some of the work and still not really see results. In fact, you can see results go in a different direction, not even just like staying at a standstill at a plateau, but like fluctuating the wrong direction, like gaining inches, gaining weight, you know, that can be very disheartening. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I might, I weighed myself the Monday that I finished and I was a whole 10 pounds heavier guys. 10 pounds heavier i measured today a week later since that and i'm four pounds heavier than i was did i just lose six pounds in a whole week yes i did my goal itself was about uh staying consistent on the journey not necessarily i want to lose five inches from here i want to lose 10 pounds from here it was never like that i'm not that kind of a person it just that's just not how i'm driven i know that but anytime I try to drive myself like that or I try to motivate myself like that I get really really demotivated. I start feeling crappy um, So that's just not how I work, right? So I really uh, Will say from from my takeaway that the actual journey was just so fulfilling I loved waking up and doing workouts um, and actually the day I finished um, the two-week shred challenge and then I wanted to take that 48 hour break and then give you guys the lowdown and then take a couple of days off. So like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and this week, Monday, right now it's Wednesday, but this week, Monday, I want to start her four week summer shred challenge, which, you know, like I was so excited to start that, but I couldn't because I'm, I'm actually still letting my wrist heal. So, which brings me to the next thing. Should you do it? Yes, you should. Should you be extra careful when you're doing it? Yes. Um, it's not super high impact, but they are, like I said, positions that you've never been in before, most likely. I would definitely say that the two week shred is definitely a great place to start. Should you do it? Yes, you should. Should you focus really heavily on the measurements and your weight and the numbers before and after? That's your call. If that's how you work, if you're more goal oriented and stuff, then yeah, maybe do that. Um, I did it for the purpose of this video. Would I have done it otherwise? I don't think so. I don't think I would have gone through the trouble of measuring myself and all that stuff otherwise. I would have just, I would have just done it, you know, just for the sake of enjoying the process. So, and the one thing I can walk away from this saying is that my willpower did not falter. 
you know, I'm feeling quite great about myself. Um, I think I look just fine. I think I look great. I think I looked great then. I think I, I look just fine now. There's always room for improvement, which is why I'm doing this. But I did the two week shred challenge by Chloe Ting and I actually gained some weight, but that's not her fault. It's a little bit my fault. It's a little bit also nature's fault. Oh well, Sally. <laughs> that's it for this video. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you took something important away from this. Be safe um, and give it a shot. It was great to take before and after pictures for yourself. Um, it's definitely a spirit lifter. You're gonna feel really good about yourself once you uh, finish this two week tread challenge. So if you're thinking about it and if you're waiting there and you're thinking about it, I'm here to tell you, uh, despite the fact that I gained weight <laughs> and inches on it, I'm here to tell you that you should do it anyways. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As usual, if you like this video, then make sure you like this video. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section below if you've tried the two week shred challenge, if it worked for you, what kind of results you saw. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Are you subscribed? Hello. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching.